It gives you a thorough insight of what is happening. The demons that are flying up and down in Nigeria is at play in Asorok again. They are going there to play. And that is what we are seeing now. Who ordered the military? Nobody is asking that question. In the first place, how can the military be going on a peace mission in a community? Where yeah, there was no report of a uh, crisis or death, just ordinary dispute that somebody was kidnapped at one stage, that's supposed to be uh, uh, settled by community leaders, by local government chairman, or even by political actors in that senatorial or representatives of the of, of the government in the state. It tells you a lot of things that is going on that is possible that the, the commander in chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces is no longer in charge. It's no longer in charge. Uh, uh, yes, and there may be speculations also that the military is doing another while the president himself is doing another. Up to now, nobody has come out to tell us that we are the one who ordered the military invasion. Is it invasion or the military a peacekeeping mission? Whatever, whatever way you look at it, the military have no business in the first place. When we have the police, we have the civil defense, we have the transitional institution, we have the NSCDC, we have the communist community leaders, we have the politicians, senators, house members. Ah! This is what Fela talked about. Fela Nicola Mokuti. And that is why Nigeria will continue to roam from left to right, from darkness to darkness. When Fela was talking about, was giving a proper description of what they have turned Nigerian soldiers, they, they have turned Nigerian military, they have moved Nigerian military from professionalism to political professionalism. Before we need to see, if you see a Nigerian a soldier, uh, uh, Andy, uh, you, you see professionalism in him. The same of all politicians, these are guys that are not qualified to be in a political position. The come of our politicians, they came. Obuwa is even is even a big title for them. I don't know. You understand? If you want to really want to put them in a proper perspective on where they belong, they have corrupted the Nigerian military. When you see a, a, an armed a Nigerian military dressed going out, or even going, you go to their barracks. You see, you know, humanity in them. You see, professionality in them. You see. Charity in them. Now, at every slightest movement, you see Nigerian military. And if you get to deep, deep, those on at the top has destroyed their professionalism. They destroyed the institution. I've destroyed the military institution in Nigeria. And they say, give out the head staff. Give out the money that was supposed to be made to take care of the rank of fire. And that's why sometimes when you look at the just soldier, you sweat if not steaming. And that is what we, we saw. Because the, the professionalism is no longer there. They, 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 they have turned them to political army of interest. They are the match. Who ordered you? So another person with this place can just come out of a whole military. Do you know the funniest thing? I expected the president himself to investigate and know who was behind. Okay, maybe now his close friend. That's why the Nigerian media are not telling us who ordered the military for peacekeeping mission. Yeah. Okay. Some are saying that they should level uh, that village. What's it? Nobody's going to it's genocide. We take them to the international court, even though we know that UN, UN has been very, very funny nowadays under the Guterres. Antonio Guterres is a disappointment in the United Nations now. It looks like the, the days of uh, uh, this man from Ghana, 
what, 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 what is it called? Kofi. Kofi Anna. Brutus Gali. You know what I'm saying? That's why we, 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 when you look at United Nations, you, you will be, you'll be happy. You will be, you'll be, you'll start even telling fella and look at Okuti to calm down. Because he said, what is unite for United Nations? It's a question. Why are there seeing atrocities all over the world? Why are there embracing injustice all over the world? Why is the United Nations taking side against uh, against Israel? If you want Hamas, when you know that their agenda is to wipe away a nation ordained by God, and you are taking side. Even Joe Biden, I know they will be careful this time around because Israel, as a nation, they should not be underrated. In whatever way, the Israel, I repeat, Israel as a nation should not be underrated now. Because the definition of what is going to come might be a moment of surrender. Okay. We are saying that we want to avoid anything that will uh, awaken the Niger Delta militants. Any action of the military? Yes, uh, you know, there was it was reported the army is running after. Uh, they say Tinubu say make you go find the killers. Where are the killers? <laughs> we will never find Boko Haram now. They were waiting for Niger Delta and I won't go find. Oh, that one militant is behind it and all that. Nobody is going to accept that. The present wars are not concrete. They don't have facts. They, it's like a chaff. It's like chasing the air. He's not talking like a president. He's not talking like someone who who, who, deserve, who is qualified to be in that. That's why uh, a lot of them are, some governors have, have started calling to be boss. Uh, please, Obi, come and help him. You know? Yes, are you not seeing it? He said, please, Obi, come and help Tinubu. Well, maybe some of these things can, can find solution. Why are you talking like that? Is the military have business in the first place in that place? What you're supposed to do is that by now make bring it to the public, bring it to the public, let people know who ordered the military. You are not concerned about it. Yes, because that's what we will unravel. The real cause, apart from the uh, uh, the consequences or the causes of this conflict, one, there's no local government in those areas. That is one. Two, there's no, the security is not close to the people. Three, the transitional leaders in those communities, did they not see such thing coming? What did they do? Well, it tells you that everything about Nigeria is, has collapsed. Everybody is running to Abuja to collect money. Nigerian leaders are after money. What is coming to their pocket is what they're after. They don't care whether their followers or their subjects or citizens are being protected under the constitution or under the law. It's a mystery. You may not understand that the way the day a black man listen to a message like this I know, I know that this is not a matter of party party. I help you manipulate government, manipulate election, manipulate the result. Give me slots. See, see I'm not. Nigeria, see Nigeria where they, uh, see as Nigeria be now. No, see as Nigeria be now. See as Nigeria. Well, maybe they should just change the name Nigeria to Biafra. No, bro, I'm, I'm just telling you. It has nothing wrong with that. Ghana did it. A lot of countries have swapped their names to another name. So that they should stop corrupting the labor leaders who are in the Senate and the House of Representatives. They will come to that ideology that who they represent is Peter Obi. Peter Obi is the symbol or the face of a surviving or a thriving leadership in Nigeria. Until we move from that, until we begin to experience that shift, 
They have gone there. As in a woo, so they will not have a taji tawaji. You know what is there? Okay, uh, why is it that these uh, leaders, Trumpolo, Asai de Kupo, Asai Trump, and others are not speaking out? They just speak out because they know that we do not need to have military presence in those areas. What we need to have in those areas are called Marine Police or the Navy. Or even not, even, not even the Navy. The Navy should be strictly based on federal instruction. But I'm talking about protecting citizens of those communities we need to have what they call marine police on every nook and cranny well equipped well empowered to do their job so if you look at that uh, 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 of course uh, uh, i started the cobalt to not talk now because we know that the people are waiting for him but i have so much respect for uh, government Topolo. you know he's a man i respected so much up to now, Tobolo has refused to accept that amnesty. He knew what is happening in the Niger Delta. He knew that the Niger Delta quest is not at its peak. He has contributed so much to the development of Baramatu Kingdom, where he comes from. I respect Tobolo. Whichever decision Tobolo is taking today, I respect him for that. He's a man. Is the kind of man that we need to turn things around in Nigeria. At least the senators our House of Rep from that uh, area should be speaking up at this point in time. Nobody is speaking up because you know that there is, eh? there is government political movement here and there. I know what I mean by political movement. Corruption, compromise, meeting, interest, selfishness. That's why they are not talking. This is the time for civil society organizations, cultural groups, Pandev, Ijojit Council, should come out and begin to ask the same question we are asking here. Who ordered the military for a peace mission? That is one. Two, everybody that is coming talking about this, everybody is on the cosmetic level approach because of what is going to come into their pocket. Why is it that we are hearing constitution now? And these people they should stop confusing us. So stop. What we need is restructuring. In restructuring, we'll find our constitution respectively. Why are they trying to bring this thing together still by force? Why are they talking from both sides of the mouth? I know that Paya Debanda has been an advocate of restructuring. I've been issued. Gade Adams, yes, supported 200%. Kudos. Yes, we need to be focused on this. We don't really need to be talking about 2014 uh, new constitution because at the end of the day, it's going to bring problems. We want restructuring of Nigeria, total restructuring. Let every region, every local government, every community rediscover itself. Live by its own destiny. Work by his own destiny. Balkanization. Transform by his own destiny. Of no, no, it's not this is not balkanization because you at the end of the day, you have made the center to be very weak. There's no the uh, Jabba, you will see another go begin Jabba. All the food I see you see in Asura. Uh, uh, in terms of Nigeria is that who told you that? Look at them. The Southern Nigeria you see all of them on the run. That is why the issue of Pardon has become a systematic way of looting Nigeria. Every time they part, what are they parting? Are they women? Constitutional corruption. What are they parting? Somebody came out and said, You will be able to see 4 trillion, and I don't want to do the normal thing. I go expose you now. All the mafias that were behind that pardon. They come and say, they suspend them. 
the governor of that state, Malam, something if I can remember, about this state, I come out to defend Mingi. What Mingi? Abu Mingi is talking about. He's 100% correct, and the man said, I am not going to apologize for any fucking thing because they don't make work for Nigeria. They say it's PDP. Article is behind it. That is APC for you. A very funny party with funny people. The funniest politicians I've ever seen in history of Nigeria. Look at the kind of people that assemble. Uh, Lawal, Lawal, uh, uh, Ahmed Lawal, Senate President. Ababio, Senate President. Oh, Nigeria for the Nigeria for the Okay. That is the way. Okay. okay. That is the fact. Okay. Unless that is done, my brother, we are still zero over zero. Thank you very much. God bless you.